Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended not be too offended by it. <laughs> um, and uh, we uh, do this uh, show um, live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and they are all recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go back to our website and, on our webpage and see the recordings of all of our previous uh, sessions that we have done. Um, the show and the recordings are free and open to anyone who wants to to watch them. They're all up there for everyone. They don't need a password or anything like that to get in. And we do all sorts of things in the show, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, uh, anything related to libraries um, we, put, um, we will have on the show. We have commission library, Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes do presentations, and we have guest speakers, uh, as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is Louise Alcorn, who is the reference technology librarian for the West Des Moines, Iowa Public Library. Hi, Louise. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and um, she's, she's, I don't know, you do lots of things there, reference technology librarian. <laughs> that sounds kind of a nice broad... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty much Jill of all trades sort of mm -hmm. job. Uh, they keep they keep adding to it. You know, yes. Stuff. Yeah, I am so. the, I'm the web, web mistress mm -hmm. and then some. So mm -hmm. yeah. So and that and so she was of course then involved in doing a um, a mobile app for her library and um, using Boopsy. Um, so uh, she's going to talk to us today about what they did, why they did it, um, how it all turned out, um, the process they went through um, at their library. So if you want to go ahead and start, Louise, I've, uh, we are good. To, you are good to go. Okay. Great. Thank you, Krista. Um, again, my name is Louise Alcorn, and feel free to uh, ask questions, and Krista will pass them along to me uh, as we go along. I will try mm -hmm. to I will try to remember to pause uh, for questions. As I go it's along. okay. I'll interrupt whenever I feel like it. Oh, okay. So, right. <laughs> Krista and I are old pals, so she knows she can interrupt me at any time. So, okay. Well, first of all. Um, I don't know how many of you actually have uh, a mobile app already or are thinking of one. We have been thinking of one for a while um, for, I guess, what are the obvious reasons and, and a few that weren't quite so obvious. Um, we have a very um, sort of wired community, what we used to call a wired community. I guess now they're really unwired because it's uh, uh, mostly via mobile. And it, increasingly people are using mobile devices here. We're a fairly affluent suburban community, uh, medium-sized library growing like a weed, um, and frankly the only way we can continue to provide services to everybody is to, to go as virtual as we can, as often as we can. Um, so people had been asking for it. I, I guess <laughs> when you say why are you doing something, I think a perfectly reasonable answer in libraries is, well, our pat patrons are asking for it. They want it. Other area libraries had been sort of testing it out. They'd had um, some versions uh, here and there. Um, we kind of were running in parallel to a few other libraries who were working on the same thing at the same time. My biggest concern, and I'm going to pop up here, um, <laughs> our current website, which is actually uh, in process of being changed, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, is definitely not mobile friendly. It's on a about six or seven year old content management system platform and it just is not mobile friendly because um, it was not designed to be. Uh, in addition, we, we did not have a mobile app and our even our, we had Horizon at the time as our ILS, and that web interface was not, I actually had a screenshot of it, but it's so awful, I'm just not even going to bother. Um, it just really didn't, it didn't work very well uh, on any kind of a mobile device, even a larger tablet. Um, so we were looking around, but we also, uh, we realized we didn't, you know, at the, mo at the time we were looking around, we didn't really have the funds. We had basically just contracted just last year. So in 2012, we had contracted to get a new ILS. We decided to go with Innovative's uh, new Sierra product with their Encore, um, the web interface basically is how I think of it. Uh, that was all well and good, but that was you know, basically going to take up all of our time and energy uh, moving to that. Well, all of a sudden, in uh, late 2012, we got notification that uh, a woman in the area had passed away and had left the library a chunk of money directly to the library rather than to the friends or whatever. And it was, as it turned out, exactly enough money to pay for 
uh, mobile app development and website development that we needed because I had been looking around and sort of holding that in my pocket for a while. So it was serendipitous. It was sort of a sign from the library gods that this is what we were supposed to do. Um, and the fact that we were getting a new ILS was also a big pushing factor. Um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, if we're going to, we were kind of leapfrogging to this new ILS with a lot of new features, and many of them could be what you might call mobilized. They could be done uh, via mobile devices. And we didn't want to not have that option and people get frustrated, you know, that, well, okay, you've got this great new thing and it looks pretty, but why can't I get to it on my phone? Because that seems, you know, that seems reasonable to people these days. They do all sorts of things on their phones. Heck, they order mm -hmm. coffee on their phones, you know. So, really? Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a couple places where you can order your coffee ahead via your mobile app. So, oh, nice. Um, pretty, much, pretty much you can be as lazy as you want as long as you have a smartphone. Um, so, just a little a little word of warning to anyone out there who does project management like I do. Things not to do all in one year. Get a new ILS, implement a new ILS, develop a brand new mobile app, and build an entirely new website, uh, which is launching in about a month. <laughs> um, I was lucky, and I, I didn't really have that much to do with the ILS uh, launch except for doing some public end things like writing instructions and, and uh, getting it integrated with the new website. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, we're pretty much, we're a pretty stressed bunch of puppies over here. So. Yeah, you, you need a vacation. <laughs> yeah, pretty much a couple, preferably. Um, but in fact, it's been very exciting. So let me talk about why we went with Boopsy, because you know there are a number of options when you're talking about a mobile app. And let me be clear about a mobile app. I'm talking about you know, obviously you guys know what apps are for smartphones and so forth, but basically a, a, a piece of software for people to access via mobile devices our, many of our library services, primarily obviously our catalog, uh, our ILS system. Uh, but in addition, we were also looking for something that could integrate um, pushing people over to OverDrive. We're part of a consortium here in Iowa uh, called Wilbur. Um, that's 100 plus Iowa libraries doing OverDrive. And so that's a big chunk of our, um, quote, circulation. We have a group, um, um, an OverDrive group here in Nebraska as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually have two here in Iowa because it was just kind of a weird thing that got set up separately. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just growing and growing and people are really using it a lot. And we wanted to just, you know, it's the kind of thing where they're, they were having to do it on a separate app. Um, on their phone, it would be nice if it was more tied into our brand, as it were, so that they're really getting to it from the West Des Moines Library, not via an OverDrive app necessarily. Um, we also have One Click Digital uh, from Recorded Books, which we hope to integrate in, and and some other products that we just we knew could be made more special, made more useful via mobile devices, and we wanted a, a platform to do that in. Um, so we also wanted people to be able to check their account and so forth, in part because even when they come in the library, <laughs> we're very, very busy. We're crazy busy, and we're trying to, uh, one of our strategic plan items is to add more self-service options for everything that we do. And so the mobile part of that is really within our strategic plan in the sense that people can, you know, check their account, do things. Eventually, we hope they're going to be able to actually check out books that way. Um, there is a function that you can add with Boopsy where that is possible. Uh, we're still trying to get used to our ILS first and make sure that that's all working. Um, and also we have some infrastructure things in terms of um, the right scanners and so forth to do that. Uh, but that is in our longer term plan. So pros and cons of doing it ourselves versus, versus Boopsy. I do want to point out to you that you can create a mobile app on your own. And I'm going to point you to, I'm going to go over to here. Um, this was actually a really nice little presentation done by Amy Clark from the Milford Public Library up in, uh, in Milford, Iowa. Uh, they, and I'm, this, is, this will all be on the recording, but she did a nice little Weebly um, site to go along with it, so I figured I'd give her a little bit of credit here. <laughs> um, and she did a nice thing about all sorts of different mobile things, but specifically how to build your own app. Uh, was one of the options that was on here, and she talked about three different um, 
possibilities for doing that, Infinite Monkeys, AppSkyzer, and Conduit Mobile. They went with Infinite Monkeys, which is kind of a, a, a nice uh, drag and drop, build your own mobile app thing. Um, we wanted something a, l a little bit more sophisticated than what you could make with that, uh, and also the reality is we're at about 50% understaffed for the, um, pub for the public that we serve, and the reality was it was going to be me, and they couldn't, they just honestly couldn't free up enough time for me to be able to do this and the website and all of the other work that I do. So it was a time and money consideration uh, to, to pay a third party developer to do a lot of the work and I'm going to talk about their process which was very good. But the reality is I, I could have done it you know, for us on, on our own and I would recommend you at least look at that option. I had certainly done some research on it, I had started playing around with it. Uh, one of the things was I wasn't, because the ILS was so new, we would have had to really work with them to figure out how to get that to work back and forth, whereas Boopsy had already worked with Innovative on, the, on their new, new Sierra ILS. Uh, again, these were just considerations we, we put into play, um, but they, it just came down on our side with the pros and cons to go with a third party. But I, can, I actually know several libraries, especially smaller libraries, who've just done their own and they've been quite successful and they work beautifully. So I do like to point that out, that that is an option. Um, so anyways, we went, I'm just going to kind of show you the boopsie site here. Um, one nice thing is they work with libraries. That is their primary business, or at least the, the folks who we're dealing with, that's their primary business. What's nice about that is when I say things like ILS, they don't, their eyes don't cross or they go, huh, what are you talking about? They really understand that we have issues with our ILS. There's ways we like to use you know, our catalog systems. There's ways that we need to make sure that patrons can use them. And the options that they provide are really very much designed for that. So that was a, that was a definite pro uh, on their side. Um, other things were that they, they do it as a project management. I never actually met anyone from Boopsie. I did the entire thing via phone, email, and, a, and project management software. Um, <clears throat> now that may sound a little odd to put that in the pro column, but I, I don't have time. I don't have time to go to meetings. I don't have time to do, you know, I, I was also at the same time trying to work with our web developers who are local and who I did actually have to meet with in person. Uh, and so being able to do Boopsie largely uh, virtually was a huge bonus. And it sounds like that's a good way for you can do it on your own um, time frame and on your own schedule that you're Very not much. locked into, uh, oh, well, we must meet at this time to tell you this thing, or we have this sales pitch you got to watch on this day that you can, yeah. Yeah, and when, an interesting thing about the process is they give you a series of steps, which I'm going to show you. They have this really nice implementation document that they give you at the beginning. In fact, here, let me pull, let me pull that up. So this is literally, they send you a Google Doc, and it literally goes through, and this is just, this kind of made me laugh when I saw it, but it absolutely works. It's just, okay, phase one, you're going to do this. Phase two, you're going to do this. Phase three, and here's a remarkable thing. They actually followed this process. Now, I do a lot of project management. I do a lot of project management working with vendors um, and staff and multiple departments and everything, and I'll tell you what this was hands down, one of the easiest, smoothest, most clearly laid out implementation processes I have ever gone through. And I, you know, I know I sound like I'm shilling for Boopsy. Uh, I, I, mean, I am and I'm not. I am trying to give you guys an idea of sort of the pros and cons here. And a definite pro is that they know what they're doing. They also know that we don't always know what we're doing. <laughs> um, and so they lay out very clearly what we need to send them. So to give you an idea, because I know this is a question that often comes up when we talk about this, what did we have to do versus what did they do? Um, what we had to do was things like provide logos, uh, provide images that we wanted them to use, and I'll show you, I'm going to actually show you the app here in just a moment. Uh, we also provided some, you know, sort of general design ideas. Part of it was because we were working on the website at the same time, we were far enough along with the website development, you know, we were a month or so into that, that I could, and I did this on purpose, what the color scheme, as it were, that our website developers had come up with, I was then able to show a screenshot of to the Boopsie people so that their designers could work from that, so that our 
mobile app and our soon to be launched new website uh, looked roughly the same in terms of the the color palette being used so that was actually that was very important to me because I'm hoping these last for a very long time both both of these new items so I wanted them to not jar against each other so other things we had to do and this is a biggie um, our head of tech services who's our head cataloger did have to do a catalog poll where we basically they needed a, a data poll um, to work with so that they could test the app um, and then he has to actually do that periodically in order to make sure that Boopsie is getting all of the data and I'm not a cataloger but I'm sure uh, any of you who are will know that that is something that has to be put into the workflow so he's now had to add that into his roughly monthly workflow and they let you decide how often you want to do that because um, of course you know if you're adding a lot of new items they may or may not be showing up on there if it's not going because um, it's not really pulling live per se so uh, that is something that we we had to put into our workflow and so we had to talk about that really before we started to make sure that 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 would work especially since we were trying to implement a new ILS at the same time I certainly didn't want to add burdens onto our tech services department because uh, I didn't want them to explode. Um, so I'm going to stop for just a second and see if there are questions come through that I can answer. Um, nothing has come through yet, but um, yes, yeah, if anybody, if you have any questions, comments, um, thoughts for uh, Louise, um, type them into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, if you have a microphone, just say, I have a mic, unmute me, and I can do that, and you can use your microphone to ask your question, just like we are doing here. Okay. Um, um, I'll let yeah, you know I'm, if anything I'm, comes in. Yeah, I'm far more interesting when I'm answering a question than when. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. um, uh, other things we had to do was, uh, like you'll see here, provide two test patron accounts, and we actually were just uh, my head, the head of circulation, just had emailed me the other day saying, "Do we need to keep these open for Boopsy?" And yes, you do. The, as long as you're with Boopsy, you need to keep those accounts open because they use them for testing uh, and to make sure that things are working uh, periodically. So no big deal. I mean, you just create a couple of dummy accounts and. Um, what we did was we, we put a couple of items on them per their uh, request, and these are basically items we'd withdrawn anyway, so we just kind of leave them in a back room and um, don't worry about it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else I should let you know about in terms of their implementation. Uh, it was just remarkable. Now, a bi one big thing you have to do is you have to create an Apple developer account. Oops, I just closed the window I needed. Well, no big deal. Um, they basically want you to create an Apple developer account. You have to do this. The library must do this, and it takes a while. And this is interesting because when you're talking about the timing, when I asked them when I was first contracting with them, well, how long can this take? Um, and they said, well, we can get it. Depending on how fast you are getting things to us, uh, it can be done in as little as like four to six weeks. But that can really depend on Apple. So if the Apple developer mm -hmm. account, sometimes it can take a week or two for that to come back through. There may be questions they have. They walked us through it so carefully, step by step by step, so that there was no chance that Apple would go, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? Um, and so that, that really helped, that they, they walked us through it very, very carefully. And again, it's another Google Doc document that they just sent you. I was really, I was, I'm, I'm just very impressed. I write, I write instructions for a living. I write, you know, lots of, lots of stuff for, you know, overdrive and so forth. And I was very impressed with the way that they set it out. I never had, to, I, I, I asked very few questions uh, except as they related to our data. So I, I do have a question. So this Apple developer account thing, this is yeah. for the entire app to be built created to work with all devices or is that just something for it to work on Apple? Just for iOS, yeah. So okay. basically you don't need to do it for Droid and whatever you don't, that's, you just have to submit your information to the various stores from them. Uh -huh. but with Apple you need to create a developer account saying that you are going to, you, basically permitting Boopsy to do the development for you. Okay. And so. even if you're building your own mobile app, if you want it in the Apple stores you have to, you may have to do this as well and I believe mm -hmm. most of the 
the third-party software, like the Infinite Monkeys, um, does explain this to you, that this is, again, a thing that you're going to need to do to get it in the stores, is to, you kind of have to create a, an account with them to say, yes, we're, we're real people, yes, we really want to do this, and we're going to take responsibility for whatever is you know, put onto the store. Right. But So um, this special account, the, the extra thing you have to do is just for Apple, you don't have to do that. Yep. that. There's not that same kind of thing for Android or the other places. Other. No, for that, I'll show okay. you here. You basically will just create the promotional text, which is then, in, this is basically what goes on. And they again, they give you really clear instructions of words not to use, words to use. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, things, that'll, things that are going to show up and make problems. Uh -huh. um, they let you know about that. And then, uh, but the Apple one, they're just, Apple's just very finicky. I don't think that's going to surprise anyone. They're no. just very, yes. very finicky. <laughs> uh, and it costs you $99 a year to have that developer account. So you, mm. you do need to put that into your, I mean, you know, it's not a lot of money, but for a small library, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So you do need to keep aware of that. So, um, and obviously the cost for Boopsy, it's hard for me to say because part of it is based on the things we wanted. They also have a couple different levels. They have um, the standard package and then they have the optimum package. We went for the optimum package but not the full optimum package, <laughs> which is a little confusing. But I do want to show you a couple of features that we did get that I thought were rather cool and helped us. Here's the other part. It helped us sell it to our board because even though the money had come to the library, technically, you know, we could spend it. The board did need to approve us spending it for this particular project. Um, one of the things that we added, Again, we have the OverDrive, and so they have the one-click access through to the OverDrive titles. They are working with one-click, and we hope to add those uh, perhaps by the end of the year as another another function. But the other one is the Booklet Mobile. This is <laughs> this is such a it's in a way it's kind of a silly thing, but I kind of love it. So patrons are at a bookstore or out somewhere or at home, and they can scan the ISBN on a book. And some of you have probably seen this. I'm going to actually go over here and show you an image. They basically, on their phone, using the little, using the little scanner feature on their phone, which uh, you may not even realize you have, but it's, it's basically built in there, they can scan the barcode of the ISBN barcode. And then it immediately goes over to your catalog it, via the mobile app and searches to see if you have that book. Uh, in this case, this search said, no, the library has no matching copies. Uh, I think it was just that edition that we didn't have because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure we have that book. Um, this is, by the way, these screenshots are thanks to my boss. Uh, my director basically took all these off his iPad. That's why they're so wide form. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it also makes cool. to see them, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, but again, that was kind of a neat little feature. That, that I think, is genius. That is It is kind awesome. of genius. Well, You're in a bookstore. Look, you can get it for free over here. Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny. Uh, librarians always ask me about what kind of statistics that you get um, from the company. And one, I guess, con I would say is that the stats, they pull the stats for me, so I can't actually pull them necessarily the way I want them. But what they do send me is that they basically build a Google Doc and then they just dump it in there each month. So I have like May and June here. Uh, and one of the things they do show you is, if I can just find it here, is uses of the book look. <laughs> um, so that's actually kind of fun. And I'm really going to be interested to see here in the Des Moines area in October and then in April, I think, we have this giant book sale that people come literally from all over the country for. It's actually to support Planned Parenthood of the Heartland, but it, it literally fills a giant oh, yes. building. Oh, yes, I know about that, yep. State Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's full of books. It's basically like librarian heaven, right? <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to be really interested to see how many more book looks we get from people you know, running through the book sale, <laughs> scanning ISBNs to see if they have it so they don't have to buy it, but instead borrow it from us. So uh, I'm actually going to track our stats rather carefully in October when that comes up again. Um, so just kind of funny things. I mean, it's again, this is not a big deal, but yet at the same time, if you can see that people really are using that function, it means that they really are thinking of the library when they're looking, you know, when they're looking at the bookstore or whatever, they are thinking of us. And that actually makes me feel good that they're, it, it occurs to them to check if they can borrow it rather than buy it. Mm -hmm. so now, so not, not to like possibly ask a question that will be difficult or something, but it just popped in my head. That's cool. What about other media that the library has? Like, can you scan a barcode on a DVD that's at the bookstore uh, and see DVDs if you have, have that? Have, 
I don't know if they have ISBNs, but they have yeah. ASINs, and mm -hmm. I think those might like scan. Can other things work with it, yeah. And if not, that'd be really something good, to suggest. Really <laughs> Here they say just books. ISBN and I had this feeling of it wouldn't books, work so yeah. well in a DVD unless it had a proper ISBN. Mm -hmm. So I will have to test that and let you know. And it could That's be an, an a, a feature to suggest adding that, you know, the libraries carry more than just the books. And bookstores carry more than just books now, too. I mean, back of our Barnes and Nobles, full of movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, if anybody in the course of the next half hour wants to download our app, just search in the App Store for West Des Moines Library. It's free. Uh, give it a whirl. Why not? Yeah. Uh, I'd love to know if that actually works. So I am tasking one of you with that. So pull out your smartphone and figure it out. Um, now, one of the things that we've not added yet, but I talked about, was the book check, which is this is something you can add on where they can actually do self-check on their phones. And our idea is to eventually um, get RFID so that, you know, we don't have to do the, the tattle tape um, things and they can just self-check out and not have to scan it out. Um, this is a long-term process because we don't yet have the RFID in place, but it is something that we're planning on, which is, again, part of the reason we went with the Boopsie is that we knew that the minute we were ready to do that, they could effectively turn this on for us uh, and we wouldn't have to sort of start all over again. Uh, and again, we're so low staffed, <laughs> so, we have so few people, that this actually really is a, a, a good equation for us in terms of time and staff time uh, versus money. So I'm um, trying to think what else I wanted to let you guys know about. Oh, <laughs> one other small con, um, and this is entirely nitpicky, but I like to be nitpicky because I'm a librarian. Um, they, they give you a unique Boopsy code. And so basically our, and I'm going to show you the actual app. That's what we're going to do next. And But it's Des Moines. Well, this is a problem because we're technically West Des Moines and Des Moines has its own library system. But they gave this to us and by the time they'd done it, they'd created so many accounts for us to get this thing started, I couldn't really get them to change it. <laughs> so I'm a little worried when people are doing Google searches uh, that they're going to get us correctly. But at this mm -hmm. point, we're not going to worry about it. If it comes to a thing later, we may have to you know, work with Boopsie to, to sort that out. Um, so the pros are really that we get professional development, including, by the way, professional graphic design, <laughs> which, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head over to the actual app now. Um, this is the website we send people to, demoine.boopsy.com. Again, I wish it said West Des Moines. I'm just not going to worry about it. Um, there's a QR code there where they can just scan the QR code, and just that'll take them straight to the app store to grab it. Um, or they can uh, actually just go in and uh, download it. There's various things they can do. Um, I'm going to actually pull up. Are you guys seeing the little pop-up window with the actual app in it? Yes. Yep, I'm seeing it. Excellent. Okay, so this is our app. And um, one of the nice things they did was, you'll see the logo here. Um, the reason I'm pointing that out, that actually is a slightly altered logo than what we've used in past years. It, however, matches the new design on our new website. So again, once our new website launches, people will get, oh, I see, that's what they were doing. <laughs> I'm hoping that's what they're going to say. Um, but again, you can go in and you can check your account. Luckily, I type fast. And it gives you the full, I wanted to show it to you live. I have all these screenshots, but I really kind of wanted to show you live. And so I can see what I've got checked out. And again, this would be on my phone, but I'm kind of showing it to you in this form format. But I actually love the fact that I can pull it up here and test it out before I go grab it on my phone. I actually kind of like that. That is um, very cool. That, and you can actually show it to someone who's not sure. What do you mean what's going to look like on my phone? Exactly. You can tell, well, let's just exactly. look at it on the computer here so you can see. Yeah. Right, because they're like, what do you mean by a mobile app? What will I be able to do? I don't know if I want to have another app on my phone. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, And then it also shows me my holds. Um, let's see. And then... So it's kind of nice, and they also tell me whether I have fines due and all that marvelous stuff. In addition, there's that book look function, which we talked about, and I can also, it'll shove me over to uh, our overdrive, and again, it shoves me over to our Wilbur consortium right away, which is also nice. Um, so I can actually get in, I'm going to assume you all are going to just forget what my library card number was, so. 
And again, this is now my digital account. This is my OverDrive account. Um, I don't really have anything checked out right now. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not really letting me in there properly, sorry. Part of it is because I don't have it fully in. What it would do is send me over to the OverDrive app. Um, but it will at least tell me what I have out, and I can go and, um, and check what dates things are in. The library locator is basically just um, our hours. Now, our hours change. We're technically on summer hours right now, so I have to twice a year have them change it back and forth. Um, but they just do that for me with no charge. That's just part of our um, agreement with them. So that's nice, too. We do pay an annual fee to them. OK, I always love that this like doesn't quite work. <laughs> Um, when you do it on here. It does work beautifully on your phone. It takes you right over to the um, to the Google Maps. But again, you know, the basic things that you'd expect to have on there. The Ask Us, um, they can actually call. It's a direct call thing. They can email us, so it'll link to their email if they're on their phone. Uh, and then, of course, the, the information. <clears throat> and then our Facebook account. Um, I haven't actually added the Twitter or anything on there. I don't really want to. Um, but it's a nice it's a nice interface. So and again, it's the very very simple end of our catalog interface. Um, so I'm actually going to do the one they suggest. But you'll see how as you're searching, it's actually pulling stuff up for you, which is nice too. So it's very very fast, very um, useful. And then you can actually get uh, information. Um, so that is our app, and it's very pretty. It's very nice. People have have responded very well to it. Uh, I hope in the future that we're going to be able to add more functions to it. For instance, I want to look at possibly having our various EBSCO products pull through to this um, to the mobile app more directly so people can search that more directly. Technically, they can search it through our catalog, uh, but I'd love them to be able to just search that separately uh, directly through there. And I haven't really decided what we want to do yet, which is why we're, we haven't yet added it. So. Are there other questions right now? I do want to pause and see questions. Um, yes, a uh, comment and question. Um, someone from here said on the text chat um, about the book look thing that it says it does an ISBN search in the catalog, so it wouldn't really work on a scan that isn't of an ISBN the way it's set up now. Right, um, right. But I still think that would be a good feature to suggest to them. Well, and the thing is that I don't know whether they're uh -huh. also including ASINs in there or not. I suspect mm -hmm. it is just ISBNs. Yeah. And yes, I, I, I will suggest to them the DVDs. And I have this yeah. feeling, knowing them, they're probably looking at that. Like um, you said, they know libraries, so this isn't something they new do, to them. And they know yeah. the kinds of stuff that we get asked about. Um, it's a nice little feature. I, sus I suspect they might have sort of borrowed it from somewhere else, you know, and paid the licensing or something. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, it might be their own build. I honestly mm. am not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is something that I, I think it would be nice if they started spreading that out to other media. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it would also be nice if uh, part of our problem is we do not have our um, ebooks, for instance, that are in OverDrive, we do not have all of those pulled into our catalog yet because we had trouble with our previous ILS with all of those. So we took them all out and we need to add them back in, but we're still trying to um, get our ILS you know, fully working before we start adding in uh, 10,000 additional um, items. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Okay, we do have a question um, yeah. from <laughs> Michael here at the commission. I'm going to unmute. You guys are unmuted. You should be able to talk. Am I coming through? Yes, you are. Hello, Michael. Okay. Hey, Louise. Um, so I kind of have like this larger issue sort of question, um, and and I'm going to preface this with just sticking with the standard package because I see once you get into the optimal package, you start actually using the hardware on the phone, like the scanner and things like that. What would be the pros or cons to creating a separate app versus making sure that your ILS and your website is just very mobile friendly? Um, I think the, it's interesting because we kind of asked this too, it's like, okay, do we just want to make sure, for instance, let me show you really quick because we are using, um, you know, Encore, and this is fairly mobile friendly. This page, if you went to it, um, is fairly mobile friendly. It's not terrible. It's a simple search box, so it's certainly perfectly easy to put things in. Um, the display, I'll just do this, is not bad in terms of displaying on your phone. Uh, or on, and certainly on your tablet, it looks lovely. There's no problem with it. However, 
the reality is that we've become an app-based world. And what we found is that there has been a tipping point where people don't want to go to a website and have to type in the address, even if they have it bookmarked. They want to open the app and do just that thing. Uh, and, and we're finding this we, uh, from our patrons, uh, as we've talked to them, when they have started asking, we're like, well, you know, because you know, we were trying to explain to them, well, with our new ILS, you know, you'll be able to go in just, just to the website. No, 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 I want an app. I want an app because I want the app to be able to log into my account and display things. For instance, if you were logging in here, um, it's actually our reference desk account. Um, first of all, you'll notice that Encore, this makes me crazy, you have to then click my account again to actually get to my account. It doesn't automatically take you there. This is sort of mobile friendly, um, but the reality is there's a lot more clicking. You saw when I went in through the app that, boom, I had, I had my information. I had the books that I had checked out. I had the books that I had hold. They were just there. Um, and I think that ease of use, that friendliness, that user friendliness is reasonable to look at. And again, you could DIY the app so that you're not necessarily spending the money for something like this. But the reality is I think people are looking for the app. It also, here's the thing, we're in an affluent suburb. They have certain expectations of our technological expertise, our technological level, and we were not meeting it for some years with our old ILS. Part of the reason we're doing this is to really leapfrog forward and really be present in people's technological lives um, as the library, as a community entity, because for our survival, we need to. Because the reality mm -hmm. is that our, our neighborhood, if you're not out there on an app, you're probably not being used. So does that help answer your question, Michael? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. That, that all made, made sense. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it, just like anything um, that your library is doing, it will depend on your local situation if this is the best choice or like Michael is describing just making your website more mobile friendly does that work for your community and I think for yeah. plenty of communities that would be more than sufficient especially mm -hmm. if you have an ILS who's you know that like the Encore functions here there are perfectly mobile friendly you could you could certainly you know really do a great PR push to have people bookmark that page and make sure that they had it and you know use your library use use the online you know here's the way to get to your stuff and I think you'd be perfectly fine I just we know our community is wanting that extra little fancy something uh, we just know that about our community because we've surveyed them enough times to know this mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, one other thing that I did I did forget to mention. Um, they do one nice thing they do is they do provide some marketing materials that you can use, so you can pop stuff in. I'm not. They, these are fine. These are the basic things that you know every library vendor gives you. You know, EBSCO gives you the same stuff where you can make bookmarks, you can make you know whatever. Um, I'm about to do a big push on this. So that basically we're pushing this right prior to pushing our new website. So again, they, I want them to be linked in people's minds. And so we're going to be doing a bigger push on this. So I will probably use some of their functions, but I'm also probably going to put together some of my own, again, with that new branding that we've created. I want more and more of our materials to have that new uh, color branding. Actually, let me show you guys. By the way, you are the first people to see this outside of my library. Um, this is actually going to be our new website. Yes, I know. So Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So, okay, just to give you an idea, I think I showed you the old website, right? Here's mm. our new. So you can see nice. that we're re Yeah, isn't that nice? They did a beautiful, and this is, again, a local company um, that did this. Again, because we, yes, I could have built this myself. It's on WordPress. It's not like I couldn't, you know, but I'm not a graphic designer. We don't have a graphic designer on staff. Um, we have somebody who does a little bit of that, but it's just not at the level that we needed. Again, we have a very sophisticated user base. Uh, anything that doesn't, you know, look fairly pretty, <laughs> we're going to mm -hmm. hear about. Um, being, a, being able to have an actual uh, professional uh, graphic designer of some sort, make you can tell the difference from pages that do and don't. Um, and being able to support a local business, that's very awesome. I, mean, I know we have local companies here yeah. in Lincoln, too, that libraries and um, can go to, and you don't have to go to some big 
crazy expensive place, just look for someone local that can help and do the thing for your life. Yeah, and yeah. they did a nice job. We, we paid them, you know, again, the money that we were donated basically was enough to pay for this website development and the Boopsie. You know, we went a couple thousand over because we, we were adding some functionality that we knew we were going to need in the future. Um, this is a WordPress-based WordPress website, which means that I now have about 90% more control than I had in our previous content management system, which was, again, that is a cost-benefit analysis that we made in that if we pay the money now to have them build us something with all of the add-ons and all of the stuff we need, that saves me hours and hours and hours and hours of time as the sole, you know, web mistress for our site. Um, I, I then have a platform upon which I can do the value added work of actually putting content in. So, which mm -hmm. I, you know, we're madly doing. A lot of this is just temporary stuff right now, but we're madly trying to add in uh, the content so that we can launch. Um, but it's. And a lot of this is just being pulled from feeds and stuff we already had, but it's just being done in a much more sophisticated fashion. Um, the company that we used is called Flying Hippo. So basically, I got to say things like Flying Hippo and Boopsie a lot in the last six months, which has <laughs> also been a lot of fun for my job. So, makes it makes the stress a little yeah, in fact, here, less. I'll give you a little a little Betty to finish out to finish out our time here because every time <laughs> I say Boopsie, I think of, of think of that. Yeah. So, um, that's basically what I have to tell you. Again, this is this was a cost benefit analysis that we made. It doesn't necessarily make sense for everybody, but I did want to give full props to a company that I, I mean I've dealt with vendors for twenty years now, uh, in various in various ways. And I I have never had an experience that was so smooth. Okay, to give you an idea, the only other staff member that really had to spend much time on this was our head of tech services to do the poll. And then basically the only other staff time besides mine that was used on this entire project was when I would send out the test versions of this and have everyone on staff who had different devices try it out on their devices. So we did try it out on, you know, about eight different Droid devices. We tried it out on actually on a Windows mm -hmm. phone to cool. see if it would work. Uh, that oh, yeah. was really interesting because at the time it wasn't, and now they, they do now have um, Windows, 8, uh, Windows 8 and Windows 8 phone capability. By the oh, way. nice. At least that's what I saw on their website. <laughs> uh, uh, and of course, the various iOS things, so iPad and iPhone. Um, it works beautifully on the Droid and the, and the iOS uh, devices with, with little or no problem. I was very pleased with that. We did come up with a couple things for the, like the book look wasn't working quite right. And again, part of that was our new iOS, so we did tons of testing to make sure that the communication was going back and forth properly. Um, so that that was really helpful. So that really took a couple of weeks just because you know how long it is, you know, when you've got people working part time here and there and you want to hear back from at least a dozen people, it could take a while for all of that feedback to come in. So that I, I factored that into our, our time. I, the whole thing actually took about three months, mostly because of us, not them. And a little bit Apple. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah. Weeks so back. from start of but picking. The, the primarily was just, you know, I, I would say, yeah. Picking yeah. them is so how the, know, the way you're going to go. Okay, it can take eight weeks. Right. And it's just a matter of saying, yeah, you know, our people are so busy that I, I've just got to assume that this, this particular step, this phase, you know, because they have it all in phases, is going to mm -hmm. take an extra couple of weeks because it takes so long for everybody to, to get the stuff here. So mm -hmm. um, I just factored that in, and it was, that was fine. That's still, it's not bad. We launched yeah. in May, and it's been uh, well used since, and our usage goes up every month. So. Nice. Um, we do have a question. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I'm not sure if you showed this earlier or not. Um, do patrons have full usage of the library's website doing, using Boopsie? Uh, specifically, could they request items from the catalog, not just view their account or renew? So like placing um, an actual hold, I guess. Yeah, let's go back to the actual app. I think I closed that window. OK. Um, Yes, I believe so. Let's let's go and try. I don't really want this book, but what the heck? Oh, you can always cancel it later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, yeah. So you can request it, mm -hmm. um, and of course, it is actually. I believe it is actually in. Yeah, it's available. So I would be requesting it, and they would then pull it for me downstairs. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm not actually going to do that because I don't want to put them to that work. But basically, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so actually, it actually did, it went ahead and just did the request for me. So now I'm going to have to go in and take it off mm. later. That's um, how good it is. <laughs> that's how good it is. It's that fast. So the answer yeah. is yeah. yeah. Now, for is instance, there anything that, that it doesn't do that they can do? I mean, is there anything that the app going the other direction? Uh, can't do that you could do by going and sitting down at the catalog at a regular PC? At the moment, no. However, that's actually an interesting question because we're dealing with the fact that we eventually want people to be able to request us, request books for purchase and also request ILLs through the catalog. We have not as ah, yet yes. set that up through the catalog. Mm -hmm. And because we're having some issues with with tying those things together, and again, we're we're still we only launched our our new ILS like in March, so you can just imagine we're still in in cleanup mode. But one of the things that we want to do is to have those right now. I'm creating those forms on our website because that's where we've always had them before, and we're and it's just a it's just a web form that sends to an email. Um, we eventually do want to do those through the ILS side. At that time, I have talked to the Boopsie people, and they think they should be able to reproduce it, but it's gonna, there's going to be a little work there. So mm. that's going to be one thing where we may leave the ones on the website uh, you know, for those who are primarily using the mobile. We don't, we don't know. We're going to have to figure out how to do that. And then what we would do is put on the mobile a link to those forms. So mm -hmm. at least they could get to them if need be. But I'm really hoping we can integrate it with the full ILS functions on the mobile device. Mm -hmm. on the mobile, yeah, me. so um, someone here, I'm, I'm assuming Michael, has typed in, to clarify, the app is an interface to the catalog. The website right. is separate and not accessible via the app. It's not right. really working. No, that, yeah. no. It, it, this is just an interface. Well, it's an interface to the catalog plus to our OverDrive account. Right, it's got even extra stuff a yeah. Basically a separate app. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. yeah, it really isn't a full website. They can, you know, once we launch our new website, go to our website via their mobile device because it mm -hmm. will be mobile capable. Which would be a totally separate thing from using the app. Totally That'd be just separate thing. Go to this the browser on your, go to the browser on your phone and go to the website, just, yeah. Yeah, but the, the reality app. is that, you know, most people when they think of the library, they're really thinking of the catalog. They're thinking of the things we have, mm -hmm. or at least the things that they can access. We are slowly trying to change that. Um, now, one of the things we do have on here, though, is actually a, a, an RSS feed of all of our events is on the home page. So, okay. So our various events, this is actually an RSS feed from uh, events because we use events for all of our calendaring. So that's actually really nice. It's a it's a very nice that's clean, cool. and they ha they did have to clean up that RSS feed for us a little bit, um, but they did a nice job, and so all of that is in there, and they can go and um, and they basically just get the events page, and then they can go and click on it and go register. Nice, uh, which then takes them to their browser, mm -hmm. which it won't work in this one here, yeah. but it basically just takes them to their browser, and then they can go and sign up. So again, mm -hmm. it really that part really does get them to our our website in the sense of our events calendar website. Mm -hmm. So we are linking to other things. It's just not necessarily a, you know, the full website. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's okay because I think an app needs to be simple. I think if you add too many bells and whistles in an app, people just get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so you want your primary functions. Overwhelmed and lost trying to figure out where is the thing I want. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw somebody who had built their own mobile app and they tr really tried to put absolutely everything in it. And I was kind of, they, they kind of asked me to look at it and I said, you know, I want to do these four things. Can you just make sure it just does these four things and maybe add one other kind of cool thing and then mm -hmm. the rest, then just give me, then just give me a link to your website and I'll go look at your website separately. But I would prefer just to do these four things and then Mm -hmm. and then go uh, separately. So, um, And I don't, you know, maybe I'm alone in that. I don't think so, though, because I, I think as people use apps, they do get used to being able to do these things well. For me, as soon as I go in and open it, I want it to be able to clearly show me what I can do, why I'm there, mm -hmm. what, you know, so I don't have to go searching and looking. When I'm sitting at a computer and going to a website, I am more for me, in the mood to explore and click and discover, oh, where's this thing sec part of the website, and where's the team exactly. section, and where's the whatever section, but not when I'm on my phone, because it's a small screen, and I just, I opened it up because I wanted to do something, not because I wanted to sit around and browse. Right. <laughs> That's and, and just I also, me. 
but I also uh, think your app should send people to things that mobile devices do well. Now, mm -hmm. the list of things that mobile devices do well is expanding exponentially every day. For instance, if we have talked about the possibility of having a YouTube series of like maybe book reviews or something, mm -hmm. I would love if we do that and if we have the content to support that and not and not a minute before, I would love to for instance add that on here and have that um uh be a, an extra link on here and they can do that for you. I mean cuz especially if it's just a URL they're going to, mm -hmm. that's really easy for them to build on there. And probably there'd be a a small cost. I don't know. I need to um I, you do get a certain amount of you know sort of yearly development with your annual fee. And there is an annual fee. It's not a one-time cost because they are then sort of hosting your mobile app and so forth. So again, there are costs going forward. For me, again, that that time benefit an uh, analysis was was absolutely on spot to, mm -hmm. to go with them for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, type in, just a reminder. Type into the questions section. Let me know you want your mute your microphone unmuted. Um, one thing did come in. Someone from here wants to know the actual numbers. What did it end up costing in the end? <laughs> I was afraid somebody was going to ask me that. Now, you do need to keep in mind we are a population over sixty thousand. So, is the pricing based on then your library size? Is it, will uh, it, is there, how did it vary? Partly, and then and then partly just on their base packages and so forth. Uh, so yeah. the the base package, this was for, I'm sorry, for the optimum package was just under $1,500. And then we pay, we're paying actually for the optimum package plus some extra stuff uh, like 3500 a year, which yeah, that's a chunk mm -hmm. of change. Yeah. It would, I, I, my ga I gather it would be significantly less if you uh, went with the standard and also different sizes. Mm -hmm. And you did get some, you had that donation that helped that as well. Right, and then moving forward for the annual, because basically the, the, that initial, it was actually 2600 because they prorated it for us for that for show. It was basically like mm -hmm. we paid the, the base 1500 fee plus the, the portion of the first year. So mm -hmm. we go on a fiscal year starting July 1. And so the first part of that was basically paid for out of those funds. So that mm -hmm. meant we could do the development effectively for free. It didn't have to come out of budget. Then we have state and other funds um, and some private funds also that uh, are put in what we call our gift trust account that are then going to pay going forward. And it'll just basically have to go into our budget each year mm -hmm. um, along with, for instance, our web hosting for our website. I mean, these are, I, at this point, I think of these as ongoing uh, costs that just are part of the cost of doing business in a virtual environment now. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing, because you guys got that nice uh, donation, that libraries here, we have in Nebraska, I'm sure across the country, um, you could apply for a grant from mm -hmm. your state library association or your state library or somewhere to get started with this, to get those startup costs taken care of for you. Right. Um, that and was, and yeah. a, that's a fantastic use of a grant because it's mm -hmm. a one-time thing so that the people who give out the yes. grants can really get their brains around, you know, oh, I get it, it's just the, you know, the $1,500 or whatever they need to, to get it started. And then mm -hmm. they love to see then the library will take on you know, whatever the annual is as a commitment to this thing that they've paid to have developed. Take on so, the ownership yeah. and the ongoing maintenance and yeah. of it. Grant yeah, writers absolutely. love to see that. So. Yeah. yeah. Or grant givers. So. Mm. Yeah. so, yeah, there are ways to get it, to pull it off, definitely. <laughs> yes. And again, again, um, I, there are plenty of other options. There are even some other companies mm -hmm. that do this. Um, you can also, t you know, talk to your ILS vendor because they may also have options where they um, they actually I think innovative did have something we could have used but it just didn't have mm -hmm. all the other stuff we wanted like the overdrive and whatever I mean this just made sense we were going to be we also wanted it branded for ourselves that was a big deal mm -hmm. when you go into the app mm -hmm. store either droid or iOS you search for West Des Moines library you don't search for boopsy so that was branded for us and I know that seems really weird as a to have that in our you know big thing column, but again, when we're talking about our local community, we need we need to get our brand out there more. And so this was again, this is in our strategic plan. So I, I don't well, I don't think that sounds weird. Branding and people recognizing you, the library as as something that they can click with immediately, mm -hmm. totally makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So 
Any other questions? It um, doesn't look anything else has come in. We're almost to the top of the hour again, to 11 uh, a.m. Central Time. Anybody have any, <coughs> excuse me, last minute questions, comments, thoughts for Louise? Um, I'm sure afterwards, if you did want to, you could contact her via the, <coughs> excuse me, the West Des Moines Public Library. If you do yeah, have any. I'm, I'm, uh, I just Google my name. I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah, so. she's out there. <laughs> Well, it doesn't look like anything urgent is being typed in or be coming through. Okay. Cool. Hopefully that means I was so thorough and not so. <laughs> I No, I think you were, yeah. I covered everything we had, we had wanted to talk about. Um, sounds like it was a good process. And definitely I, I agree that, a, I mean, you said ILSs can sometimes do this, and that's fine if they've got it as a good um, module part of what they do. But it's also nice to have this company, like you said, they're geared to doing apps and doing apps for libraries. Exactly. And that makes exactly. a huge difference when you're trying to do something like this. That they And, and, and I'm, I'm going to make one final comment. If our ILS implementation had been one-tenth as easy as the Boopsy was, we would have been much happier. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, yeah. The, I, on, to be honest, every ILS company I've ever dealt with can learn a lot from the way Boopsy does does implementation. So. I was just going to say, maybe Boopsy should expand, but no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, they should stay focused on what they do because they stay do it Stay so focused well. on what they yeah. do. And I think that's why they're good, is they are pretty focused. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, everyone I've dealt with there was friendly, helpful, very immediate answers to questions, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they're two time zones away. So, mm -hmm. Where are they based in? Uh, they're they based are? in California, although they oh, actually okay. have people kind of all over. So Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you have one comment? It says, thanks, I gained so much information. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, I'd love to hear that. Cool. All right, since no urgent com questions are coming in, I think we will um, wrap it up for today. Let me get rid of this here. Um, so thank you so much, Louise. This was awesome. Um, You're very welcome. I think it was uh, – yeah, I'm just trying to get myself situated here. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I've heard of libraries doing this, and as we had seen when you and I were printing this before, there is a large list somewhere of all the libraries that are using oh, it. Yeah. So, um, here, actually, uh, give me a second. I can. It. Yeah. Uh, I swear it's in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, I think if you go to our library apps on the Boopsie page. Yeah, so that, and it's not actually alphabetical, which is very funny. Um, but if you're looking for something, you can actually just do a, a quick find. Mm -hmm. So there's us. And that's, to see yeah. who's, so, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know quite how they're adding these in. <laughs> and this, I <laughs> noticed here, too, there's academic libraries on here as well. Yes. It's not just something specific yes. to publics. Um, That's one of the things I looked at. That they had dealt with small libraries, large mm -hmm. libraries, large library systems, public, but also like community colleges as well as large universities. Nice. So they clearly have done the whole gamut. A little of everything. And all yeah. over the world. So there's a couple of Australian ones in here, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. And Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, great. Okay, I am going to, all right, then, thank you, Louise. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I am going to pull back control here. There we go. Okay, so thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope it was useful. We are recording the session, so um, sometime later today the recording will go up. And I have been bookmarking all of the links and websites and things that Louise has been showing, um, the Boopsie page and the, her library page and everything, so you'll have all the access to all those links as well when um, the recording goes up. So thank you very much for attending this morning, and I hope you join us next week when our topic is Everyone On at Your Library. Um, Everyone On is a new campaign going on trying to raise awareness of digital literacy and places that um, people, com consumers can go to get training, um, and they're pushing um, libraries as one of those locations as well to get free training on how to do anything online, anything on a computer. Um, so uh, we're going to do have uh, some staff here from the Library Commission talking about what's available from there and how you can get your library um, promoted for doing training, um, if that is something that you do at your library. So sign up and join us for that next week. Uh, and if you are a Facebook user, and Compass Live is on Facebook, we have a Facebook page. So whenever we um, have a new session coming up, we post it on here. I send reminders, uh, reminders of when, like here's the one I just did through this morning. You can log in right now on the fly to see our show. Um, when the recordings are, are ready, I post up here as well. So if you are a big Facebook user and want to follow what we're doing on um, Facebook, you can um, go ahead and follow us there. Other than that, thank you very much for attending, and we will see you uh, next week.
拜拜。Bye.